Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and guess what? I've got a comparison to do. <laughs> this is one that I have been hinting at and even outright saying that I've been going to do ever since I got the Giant Mouse Ace Grand. This is the Spyderco Shaman. This specific one I have added some Tarot Tough scales to from Fireside Co. Um, but it started as the Tree Rex Shaman, Rex 45 with the tree scales, the rosewood, diamond wood, whatever you want to call them. And so now I call it the C-Rex. If you haven't watched any of my videos on this, I adore this knife. I love the Shaman in general, but this one in particular is very much my Shaman, and I love it. The Giant Mouse Ace Grand, I am almost ready to do my full review on, but a lot of people are, are really asking for this video, so I'm going to go ahead and do it before I finalize my review on here. But I've been carrying this a ton, using it quite a bit, for a variety of cutting tasks, and frankly, I'm ready to do my full review. I'm just gonna get outdoors to do it. But these I do indoors, so it's easy for me to just get this shot today. Anyway, these two knives, as soon as I got the Grand, immediately to me, I couldn't help but compare it to the Shaman. Because they're similar in dimensions, they're similar-ish in weight. The Shaman is a little heavier, but you can see just by looking at them, they both have a, a hole for opening. Um, they both, well this one's micarta, this one's tarot tough with the scales I've got on it, but they're, they're pretty comparable in a number of ways. In blade length, the Shaman has a slightly longer blade overall, but the cutting edge, because the Grand doesn't have the, the big finger choil like the Shaman does, the Grand actually gets a tiny bit more cutting edge. So. Uh, they're just very comparable for a number of reasons, and I'm not the first one to say that. I've seen several people who've wondered <laughs> which of these is the better knife kind of in this category, because I think they do share a category. So, before I jump in to the way that I'm going to score this one, it's going to be the same as always. I'm going to explain the categories, but first I want to go over price, because I think that's important anytime that I'm doing one of these comparison videos. So, the Shaman... If you get a standard S30V version, which is, I don't think, fair to compare to this. This would be much more slanted if we're comparing Micarta and LMAX to G10 and S30V. So that the, the basic version of the Shaman is $202 currently, as of when I'm shooting this video. Spyderco tends to change their prices every now and then, so depending on when you watch this, that may change a little bit. But the, the one I got, the exclusive Tree Rex Shaman, you can't really get any more, and if you buy it on the secondary, it's going to be more than it was brand new. So the best way that I can pit these against each other, pricing-wise, is the next coming Sprint Run Shaman, which will be difficult to get, but these are also sold out at the moment right now. There will be more later, but there's a Shaman coming in Z-Ware and Micarta. So Micarta here, Micarta here. And Z-Ware is essentially equivalent to crew wear from what I understand. Don't be mad at me if there's some slight differences, but from what I've read and been told, they're very, very, very close, if not equivalent. So there is a Z-Ware Micarta Shaman coming, and that one will be $224, according to Blade HQ is just where I pulled up the prices on both of these, because Blade HQ also offers these. Now, the Grand is LMAX and Micarta, nested liners just like over here. The constructions are, are really quite similar. And this one is only 185 bucks. That's from Blade HQ or from Giant Mouse directly. I got mine directly from Giant Mouse the day that they dropped. They sold out that same morning both on Blade HQ and on Giant Mouse's website. So I know there's more coming. This is a production version, um, but 185. So this one has the inherent pricing advantage because at 185 that's like a $40 difference from the 224 of the upcoming Shaman, which will be, I think, in a lot of ways, the most comparable Shaman that there has been, because handle material, they'll both be Micarta. Crew wear is a great steal. LMAX is a great steal. Sorry, Z wear is what's going to be on the next one, but there's already been a Crew Carta Shaman. Anyway, all of that, I think, needs to be said to jump into this, because price is an important factor, at least for me, when I'm deciding on a knife. Does it make a huge difference for me? $40? It, it depends on how excited I am about the knife. Like if this one had been 224 like the new Z-Wear Micarta Shaman that's coming, would I have bought it? 
based on my previous experiences with Giant Mouse, probably not. A selling point for me on this knife was that it was sub 200 bucks. That made a difference to me. For some people, it may not. For some people, they'd see the ingredients list and they already have an affinity for Giant Mouse and they would have jumped on it no problem at 225 or 250 or whatever it may have been. But at 185, this becomes really, really compelling. And I think a lot of people do argue and can argue that the Shaman is a pretty pricey spider co. I argue that it's one of my favorite spider co's and I love the build quality, I love the specs of it, I love the thick blade stock and the way it's ground. As like an outdoor or heavy use EDC knife, the Shaman's one of my favorites and I've talked about that before on here. But all of that I wanted to say before I jump in. So how am I going to be judging these? It's the same way that I always do in these types of videos. This is a less frequent kind of video for me. I'm more of a unbox the knife, first impressions of the knife, review the knife kind of guy. But I've done a few of these videos and my formula is going to stay consistent, at least foreseeably. So first category is going to be looks, second category is going to be action, third category is going to be uh, ergos. Fourth category will be fit and finish. Sorry, I've got a list written down there so I don't forget any of these as I go along. Uh, fifth category is going to be value. Sixth category is going to be carry. And seventh and final category is going to be cutting. So between seven categories, it is possible to have a tie. Every time I do these, I try really hard to not tie the knives because I think that's... I, I want there to be a clear winner. So with seven categories, there should be a clear winner. And I haven't scored this out yet, but I'm fairly certain there's going to be a winner. <laughs> um, we'll see which one it is. It's going to be close either way, because as I've been thinking out these categories over the last couple of days, kind of getting ready to do this video, it's it's been an interesting thought process how close these are in some of these categories and which one will win. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So first category is looks. Let's start by showing you the shaman in a little bit greater detail. Now this one is kind of cheating <laughs> because the tarot tough scales on this shaman, I think just really take it to another level aesthetically. Some people probably hate that I chose seafoam tarot tough. It's an out there color and that's part of why I love it. I love that it's different. I love that it feels really unique. There's only a couple other shamans I've seen photos of out there with seafoam tarot tough scales and I think I was the first to do it, not positive, but I know there's even in the Millie PM2 Para 3 Club, there's at least one other person who's done it to a tree rex shaman so he also has a sea rex, which is cool that um, I have a, a twin knife out there somewhere, but there's not a lot of these. So aesthetically I think the shaman as a knife, personally, I think it's pretty good looking. I don't think it's very visually striking. I don't think there's like an inherent wow factor to the looks of this. It just seems very spider coat to me. The Shaman is essentially a bigger native the way I see it. It looks remarkably similar to my native five, just kind of scaled up. And it's good, and I love the knife for a lot of reasons, but I don't think the looks are like top of the list for me. The Grand, on the other hand, that was a close one. <laughs> the Grand, on the other hand, I think is a very visually appealing knife. The lines on this knife are all very simple, but they're finished incredibly well, and there's just an inherent, I don't know, there's something about the design of this knife just really vibes well with me. The blade shape and the way we've got this swedge up here, the nice like gradual belly with a little bit of flat here, the shaping of the handle itself, the way they finished this micarta, the rounding of the spine, the shape of the hole being a little bit more unique. Um, I, yeah, I to me, the winner in this category is pretty clear. I think the Giant Mouse Ace Grand is the cooler looking knife. Not by miles. I do like the way that the Shaman looks, but if I'm being totally honest, I think this knife looks better. For Instagram photos, I think this one just has a cooler appeal. So looks are going to go to the grand. Now action. I've got this one in hand, so let's start here. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> that doesn't normally happen. This one is a hole for deployment, and that's it. That's going to be the same on the Shaman as well. But with the hole, you can thumb flick, and you can spidey flick, 
I guess you could maybe do like a reverse spidey flick into a reverse grip or something. I don't know. That all the typical ways to open a knife with a hole function here. And it works really well in any of the ways I just described. The detent is dialed well. It's not the greatest detent I've ever felt, but it's the greatest detent I've ever felt on a giant mouse knife by far. Um, <coughs> it's just, it's, it's done really well. I like it quite a bit. But there's nothing like mind-blowing about the action. What blows my mind about this action is how much better it is than the other ones of their knives that I felt. But compared to the knives across my collection, this isn't like a special action. The Shaman also isn't particularly what I'd consider a special action, but being a spidey hole, we've got all those same opening methods I just outlined on the grand. But the differentiating factor is half of an action is opening, the other half is closing. On the grand, the lock bar, it's a liner lock, and so you access it with your thumb right here. The access to it isn't the best. It's not inaccessible, it's like, it's not that it's difficult to disengage or that I'm slipping on the lock bar or anything, but it's not the most comfortable, it's not the easiest to get to with my thumb. I kind of have to jam, jam my thumb in there a little bit. Compression lock, on the other hand, now this is going to be funny because some people specifically get mad at the compression lock on <laughs> the shaman because the tab of it does just barely come into the, uh, the tang of that lock when the blade swings shut. I find that I grab this compression lock a little higher because I know that it's gonna do that, or I just pull my finger out of the way before the blade fully gets there. So that doesn't bother me personally, and I prefer compression locks to liner locks. And the way that they function for fidgeting, I think is a lot more fun. It's just, it's going to be the deciding factor on this action, because both these knives are very smooth on deployment, both of them have detents that are pretty fun to play with, although the Shaman has an even softer detent than the Giant Mouse does. But this detent deploys reliably. The weight of this blade feels very satisfying to throw out with my middle finger or to thumb flick out. It's just, to me, this is a more fun knife to play with. So, action is going to go to the Shaman. Now let's go Ergos. On the Giant Mouse Ace Grand, the Ergos are pretty good. I'm not going to say they're like my favorite ergos I've felt in a long time or anything like that, but they're good. This handle profile is pretty neutral. The way that my hand lands on here, I get three fingers in this main kind of groove here, and then my pinky sits either kind of right on that hump or if I choke it back a little, it's just beyond it. It's not uncomfortable at all for my pinky to land there, but these ergos would feel better to me if that hump wasn't quite as drastic. It's Again, it's already not that drastic, so there's there's nothing about it that's offensive to me. Even if they moved it slightly further back for the size of my hand, I think I'd feel a little more locked into this knife. But overall, I do feel pretty locked in. This knife doesn't feel slippery or slick in anywhere that it shouldn't. Um, it goes in my hand well. There's, there's nothing sharp on it. There's no hot spots. Nothing is bothering me. I love that they put their jimping all the way up here and that it's actual good jimping. Let me see if I can show you that. It's just, that's the way jimping should be done in my opinion. And it goes in hand well. I really do like this knife in hand. As I've been cutting with it, I've enjoyed having it. It's, it works well ergonomically. But, the Shaman happens to be one of my favorite knives ergonomically in a lot of ways. And the more I use the Shaman, the more I love it ergonomically. The way that the scales, and these are aftermarket scales, but he's matched the contour that you get on the typical G10 or wood or micarta scales that come from factory. The way that they're, I think the proper term is scalloped, and these edges are all really well rounded, it just, it melts into the hand much better than a lot of other compression lock spider codes do. Like compared to a PM2, the ergos on a shaman for me are way better. And I like PM2 ergos, but the shaping of these scales makes the difference to me. And again, it's not just these aftermarket scales, but I've owned, this is 
a third shaman that I've owned. I've had an S30V one, I had an M4 one for a minute, and I've had this one. And the S30V one stayed in the factory G10 scales the entire time I owned it, carried it and used it a lot. The M4 one I resold pretty quick, but that confirmed that the G10 scales are good because that one also felt great to me. And then this one with both the wooden scales or these tarot tough scales has been excellent in hand. So the way that this handle is shaped to me just feels for my hands like one of the best knife scale handles that exists. I really, really like Shaman Ergos. Everything flows well. The jimping is placed well so that my thumb lands on it properly if I'm up here. If I choke up, my, my thumb does go past the jimping, but this flat part of the spine is very smooth and wide enough that I feel like I've got good traction. The jimping in the choil makes me feel really locked into that choil, where sometimes forward choils feel a little sketchy because it does get you so close to the edge of the blade. This, it just, it works in a number of grips very comfortably, and I like it more. So, ergon ergos, ergonomics, are going to go to the Shaman. Now, fit and finish. This one's tough, because both these knives have good fit and finish. Every Shaman that I've owned has been consistent, and that's what I can go off of is the knives that I've owned, right? So, I really like the way that Shamans are put together. I like disassembly and reassembly of shamans, especially compared to other spider co's. But it's not like, I, I don't think anyone picks up a shaman and is like, wow, the fit and finish of this is incredible. Like, it's very, very good, but it's not like dazzling, you know, it, does, it doesn't feel like a $400 knife the way it's put together. It feels like a good $200 knife. The grand, kind of the same. It's very, very, very good. There's nothing on here that is problematic, fit and finish wise, where I'm looking at it and being like, ooh, they missed a spot on chamfering or anything like that. There's no, the, the blade is on center. It's never come off center. The action has remained consistent. The tolerances feel tight. There's no blade play, zero, which is really impressive. My Shaman, the way it's dialed in right now to have the action like that does have a little bit of side to side blade play. This. I, I always <laughs> want to make sure I communicate. Some people say no blade play when they mean very little blade play. If I say no blade play, I mean no blade play. And I don't feel any. Zero. No blade play at all. So that's really, really good. And in addition to all everything just being done consistently and the way that I would expect from a knife at this price point, they do take a couple of extra little steps, like putting the jimping all the way up here. That's a design thing, but they nail it. This jimping is better than the jimping on that Spyderco. The rounding of the spine makes a big difference to me. Some people may not appreciate that. I really, really do. It makes a knife feel so much more finished to me when the spine is rounded like that. It just feels so much better to me. So those little touches and I guess part of it is also maybe just the, the design of the knife itself, the way it all comes together. I'm going to give fit and finish to the grand. So that's what we've done. Four categories so far, and currently we're tied two to two. Um, let's see. Yeah, Shaman got action and ergos, and grand got looks and fit and finish. So the next category is value. And this one's Value is a hard thing to define, so I'm going to de define it the way that I do for these two. But to me, it's about what you get for your dollar, right? I think we can all kind of agree on that. So it has to be a, a mixture of the ingredients that you're getting, the way that those ingredients are finished, the fit and finish of the knife itself. And there's also just kind of an intangible sensation. I talked about this in my Protec Malibu versus Benchmade 940 video, that when I hold a knife and I'm, I'm trying to feel out a knife, there's this thing that happens in my brain where I try to feel out whether a knife feels like it's worth its price tag or whether it feels like they might be being a little bit greedy when they're asking for that much. The Shaman, I feel like, to me, it's worth its price tag. If I were to get that new Z-Ware Micarta one, which I might, I really do think I'd love to have a Z-Ware Shaman, if I get that one at $224, I feel like it'll be worth that to me. 
I haven't felt their micarta scales, but I've felt enough shamans. And I've had this one for a long time, and an S30V one for a long time, so I feel like I know what to expect out of it. And to me, at $224, I think that would be worth it. Now, the Grand, on the other hand, at $185, and the way this is finished, and the materials that you get, I love Elmax as a blade steel. It's one of my favorite steels. I genuinely really, really like Elmax. I love micarta. It's one of, if not my favorite, handle material. I love wire clips, and theirs is done phenomenally well. I like titanium backspacers. I like everything that's happening here. And then they've actually gone ahead and given it a good action with a solid detent. And they've made it ergonomically very good for me. Not perfect, but very good. And just the way all of it comes together, I feel like this is one of those knives where I could see it costing a lot more than 185 and still being worth it. This knife could also be 225 and I would say it's worth it. But it's not. It's 185 So value is going to go to the grand. It just kind of has to, in my opinion. It's cheaper, and I would say it's certainly as nice as the Shaman in every way, if not even a little bit nicer in its sensation, the way it feels. So, there you have value. Next is going to be carry. So, I should say as well, this clip on the Shaman, sorry, focus, is a, this is a Lynch clip, yeah. I had to check that I'm not, I don't have an MXG clip on it right now. This is a Lynch clip, and this one particularly is actually a PM2 Lynch clip, which fits if you just don't use the third screw because there's nowhere for it to screw into. It's the lanyard hole right there. You'd have to have real big threads for it to work on there. Anyway, this clip is aftermarket. I put Lynch or MXG clips on virtually every one of my spider coasts, if not all of them. I prefer them. The only ones I don't, I should say, are the ones that come with deep carry wire clips. <laughs> so you have to spend extra if you want to get a clip like this for your shaman. I did carry my S30V shaman with the factory clip the entire time that I owned it, and it worked great. It functioned great, but with deep carry, it's definitely better. I prefer this setup. So the way that these carry, I'm going to evaluate based on it having this clip. The Grand Carry is a little bit deeper. If you can see that pocket clip. The angle on the Grand's pocket clip, I prefer slightly, the way it tilts the knife in my pocket to keep it out of the way of my hand and my wallet, which it shares a pocket with. It's a little bit lighter, the Grand is, and it's a little bit shorter, not by much, but they're both fairly wide, they're both fairly tall. They're not, neither of these are small knives. I would consider both these to be full-size EDC knives. So, the reality is, they're both great in pocket, in my opinion, in my experience. But the Grand is just a notch better. Just barely. It's not a huge margin, but I prefer the sensation of having this in pocket to the Shaman. So, carry is going to go to the Grand. Now, our last category is cutting. Both of these are, I should say, neither of them are like slicing dreams. Neither of them are insanely thick behind the edge, neither of them are absurdly thick blade stock, but both of them have fairly robust blade stock. The Grand is going to be thinner even than the Shaman is. Both of them are flat grinds which get very tall with small flats or swedges above them. Both of these blades have similar cutting edges. Both of them happen to be in very good steels. So this is a another real close one because the profiles of both of these are, are very very good I will say the edge that came on the shaman from factory was a little bit sharper than this factory edge again not by miles but just a little bit stickier in its sharpness if that makes sense this one I don't think will shave uh, it does it's not like hair popping but it'll shave a little whereas my shaman I've used extensively have never sharpened yet and it's it's it shaves better <laughs> so both of them will cut hair both of them are kind of overbuilt for EDC tasks I wouldn't consider these overbuilt knives in general like in the broad sense of the term but for like an EDC everyday in your pocket 
typical like processing cardboard and cutting zip ties now and then type of knife. These are both more knife than you need for that kind of thing. And I put them more in the category of like an outdoor folder. And both of them are great in that application. The reality though is, if I really try to be objective about it, and I've cut, actually this morning, I went out and did some cutting with both of these side by side to really feel it out because I couldn't quite decide which I liked better. Just by a slim margin, I do think the Shaman is a little bit better of a cutter. It slices through things like cardboard just a little bit better. Part of that is probably largely the edge because the Shaman, to me, based on my fingertips, feels slightly thicker behind the edge. I love the Shaman as a heavy-duty EDC or outdoor carry knife. And so the, the thickness behind the edge doesn't really bother me on this knife. In fact, I consider it kind of a design feature. But even with that slightly thicker behind the edge measurement than the Grand, it somehow slices through cardboard easier. And I did a little bit of like feather sticking kind of push cuts on some hard wood and it did better for that. So it, uh, it wasn't by miles. They both did excellent at it. The Grand is also a very, very good cutter. But in terms of like the real like down to the finite essence of how well they really get through material, the Shaman just barely edged it out. So cutting is going to go to the Shaman. So where does that leave us? We actually have a four to three win for the Grand. What's funny is I don't feel like the Grand beats the Shaman. If I'm being totally honest, if someone was to ask me which of these should I get, I can only get one. It would be really hard for me to answer that without knowing the person really well and knowing what they do with their knives and how they use them. So I think it's important to, dis to define what your philosophy of use really is and how far you want to take the knife. Because when I use both of these knives, the Grand feels really, really capable. It's a very capable knife. It's got great tolerances. It's a good cutter. It's not like the sliciest knife in my collection by any means, but it it's very good for what it is. The Shaman does all those things, but it feels to me just a little bit more hardcore. Like if I'm going to go disappear into the woods and I'm bringing a folder with me and I have to pick between these two, I'm probably going to pick the Shaman just because of maybe part of it's the ergos and maybe it's just the way it all comes together. But when I'm out and I'm doing real kind of hardcore cutting stuff that is probably beyond what most people would or should do with their folders. The Shaman is kind of my choice for that type of cutting. I love the Shaman so much as an outdoor or really hard use EDC folder. Again, I don't think the Giant Mouse is necessarily incapable. It's just that I slightly prefer the Shaman for that kind of thing. That being said, if I'm having a normal day, where all I'm really going to be doing is opening up some packages and the knife is going to stay in my pocket for the most part unless I'm just fidgeting with it and I'm just going to carry it around town in street clothes and I'm not wearing my <laughs> trail running shoes and setting out onto a dirt path somewhere, I think this is the better EDC knife. I think it genuinely carries that little bit better. It's just the, the way that it's balanced, the essence of this knife feels a little bit better. I think a lot of it is the carry and the clip and just the way it goes in and out of pocket. I think it's it's just an edge better for EDC. So both of them are really, really good. In my opinion, honestly, you can't go wrong with either of these. What I will say is I've had several shamans and all of them have been consistently fantastic. I've only had one giant mouse knife of four that I've owned that I really liked and it's this one. I have to assume that this model in general, if you get one, is going to be fantastic. But I've only held one model from this, right? So I can't speak to their consistency of quality control and all of that jazz. Whereas with Spyderco, specifically on the Shaman, I've owned several and I can. So for whatever that's worth, I think it's worth saying that I've had a better overall experience buying from a company with Spider Co. But this is a great knife, and this has shocked me for Giant Mouse, and it's one of my favorite knives I've bought this year. 
for sure. It's just, it's really, really good. And I enjoy having it in pocket. I enjoy taking it out. It won this for a reason. I don't take back the scoring. Every, every category that this won, it deserved to win over the Shaman, in my opinion. And that's based on my experience using both of these extensively enough to feel confident in saying that. And so I guess take all of this for what it's worth coming from a poor boy like me. But I think in this head to head, genuinely, the giant mouse does deserve to win just barely, but it's not necessarily my favorite knife between these two. I don't plan on letting go of either of them. I want to keep both of these. They both have a place in my collection and they'll both get carried frequently and used a lot. But there you have it. That's that's the head to head as kind of anticlimactic as that finishes. At least we have a winner. I'm not saying it deserved to be a tie. This one did win. So there you have it. The winner of this head to head or battle to the death or whatever you want to call this video is the giant mouse ace grand and it is a really, really good, very well made, fantastic knife. I really, I'm very impressed with the Ace Grand. So it deserves it. This is our winner.